Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So lately I've been doing a load of testing on Minecraft and lots of people have been asking me how exactly I've installed Minecraft and what the best method to do so is. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to be making use of a launcher called the Prism Launcher. This is going to be a far better alternative than the previous launchers I've used, for example, Mini MC, Poly MC. And not only is it the easiest way to load mods, it's also a native ARM application and it allows us to use the optimized version of Java to run Minecraft. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Prism and launcher and also get shaders and mods installed. I'm also going to show you how to set the correct non-retina desktop resolution so you can get the best frame rates out of Minecraft. And I'm also going to show you how to get mods like Pixelmon working which require older versions of Minecraft and Java to be installed. And today we're going to be showing you how to get all of this done through the Prism launcher. So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So what we're going to do now is to go to the prismlauncher.org website. So I'll leave a link to this particular web address in the description. Once we're here, we're going to go ahead and press the download button on the top right hand side. And then we're going to scroll down and then find the macOS tab here. And then we're going to go ahead and press the download for the universal version of this application. So that's going to work for Apple Silicon and also Intel Macs as well. So I'm going to tap on this now. I'm going to download this here. We're going to press the allow button. And then this is going to go ahead and go into our downloads folder. So we're going to go ahead and open up Finder and then we're going to go to Downloads and then within Downloads we have this Prism Launcher.tar. So that's finished downloading. We're going to double click to extract and that's going to go ahead and extract the application. And what we want to do is to drag and drop this into our applications folder. So I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and then let go on the applications folder and then that's going to install it into the applications folder. So once we're here, what we're going to do is scroll down and find Prism Launcher and then we're going to double click and then it says here that it cannot be opened because it needs to be checked for malicious software, press OK. What you can do is hold down the control key and then click on Prism Launcher and press open. And then we have this option here to manually open the application. Or alternatively, you can go to the Apple logo here, go to system settings. And if you go down to privacy and security, and then you scroll down on this right hand side here, under the security section, it says that we tried to open up Prism Launcher and it was blocked from use. So we're going to press open anyway. And now we're going to type in our computer's password and then press unlock. And now we can press open to manually open this application. So I'm going to select my language and press next. And now it's asking us to select our version of Java. So if we don't have Java installed on this computer already, what we're going to do is to download the latest version of ARM64 Java if you're using an Apple Silicon Mac. So in order to download Java, we're going to go to the website adoptium.net, which I'm going to leave a link to in the description. And this contains open JDK binaries, which are distributed for free. So this is basically versions of Java, which you can install on your Mac. So here it's automatically detected that we're using an Apple Silicon an a Arch 64 Mac. So we can actually download this one or if you want to manually download yours, we can click on this downloads button and it's going to take us to a list of different releases. So we can select Mac OS. If you're using an Intel Mac, you should be using the x64 architecture or if you're using an Apple Silicon Mac, which I am here, then I'm going to use the a Arch 64. So what we want is the JDK package type and then we want version 17. There are other versions that you can try to, but 17 seems to be fairly compatible. And then we're going to go ahead and click on this .pkg, which is the installer version of Java. So just wait for that to finish downloading. So once that's finished downloading, we're going to go back to Finder and then double click on this new PKG file that we've just downloaded. And we're going to go ahead and complete this installation of the version 17 of the JDK. Here we're going to press continue and then agree and then install. And then I'm going to type in our user password. So here it's asking us to access our downloads folder, press OK, and then wait for that to finish. Here we're going to press keep. So we're going to go back to our prison launcher setup here. And it's saying here that no versions are currently available. But if we press the refresh button, now we can see that version 17 of AR64 Java has now been installed. So I'm going to select a version with a star here. You might also want to change your memory allocation. If you have a lot more memory, you can potentially bump this up to help improve performance. Then I'm going to go ahead and press the finish button. So now Prism Launcher has been installed. So here we're going to press the accounts button and then select manage accounts. And now we have the option to add an account. So this is all assuming that you've got a Minecraft purchase associated with your Microsoft account. If you don't have this already, then you need to go ahead and buy Minecraft from the Minecraft website and then associate it with your Microsoft Microsoft account. So make sure you do this first. So what we're going to do is to add our Microsoft account. And it says here, please open this link and enter this particular code. So what I want to do is to press this button, which is going to help copy the code and then enter the details here. So I'm going to enter the code here. So to paste the code that's already been copied, I'm going to press command V and that's going to paste the code into this box. 
I'm gonna press the next button. And then we're gonna go ahead and log into our Microsoft account. We're gonna type in our email address, press next, and then our password, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. So we're gonna allow the Prism Launcher to access our Microsoft account. I'm gonna press yes here. And it says here, we've now signed into the Prism Launcher. We can now close the window. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. So that means we have an account associated with the Prism Launcher, and now we can now start a game. So what I'm gonna do now is to close this settings menu here. And then what we're gonna do is to create a new Minecraft world. So I'm gonna press add instance here, and we're gonna add the latest version, which is 1.19.3. So at this stage, it's a good idea to add some mods. So what I'm going to do is to select a mod loader. So the one I'm going to be using is Fabric. So I'm going to select Fabric here and then select the latest version of Fabric. Now what I'm going to do is press OK, and that's going to create our instance. However, what I want to do is to also install Iris and Sodium. So this is going to help improve performance and also allow us to load shaders as well. So what we're going to do is to select the instance and then press the edit button. And then we can go down to the sidebar here and click on mods and then click download mods. What we're going to do is to select CurseForge and we're going to download Sodium. So it's going to type in sodium and it's going to do a search for sodium. And then we're going to download this latest version by clicking select mod for download. I'm also going to download Iris. So Iris shaders, we're going to click select mod for download. So now I'm going to do a search for one more mod called FPS monitor. And this is going to help us to see what the frame rate is like without using F3, which can sometimes affect performance. Here I'm going to select FPS monitor and then select mod for download. So basically once those three mods are selected, we're going to click review and confirm. And that's going to download all three of these mods that we're going to use today. Press OK. And now all of those mods are downloaded. So I also want to download shader packs as well. So what we can do is click the view folder button and then basically any shaders that we want to add, we're going to put into here. So what I want to do is to download one of these standard shader packs called Silver Shaders. There's also this website called wiki.shaderlabs.org, which allow you to see all of the Apple Silicon Mac compatible shader packs. So the one we're going to be testing today is Silver's Vibrant Shaders 1.50 High. So I'm going to press download here. Here we're just going to wait for the link to be created. Press skip. And then we're going to download this version using this download button. And then this is going to start a download process. So if you experience this issue where the shader zip file is already extracted for you. What you can do is go to Safari and then go to settings and then deselect this button which says open safe files after downloading. And then we can basically download the file again. We really need it in the zip file format. So once that's done, we'll minimize here. Here, I'm just gonna control click to open up a new finder window. We'll go to our downloads folder. We're basically gonna drag and drop this zip file for Silver's Vibrant Shaders into the Shader Packs folder that we opened up earlier. And now Shader Packs have been installed. So if we go to the Prism Launcher and we're gonna go ahead and double click on the instance of Minecraft that we created. Now this has all the mods and shader packs that we want to test. So now I'm going to go to a single player view world. And what we're going to do is to maximize this. And then we're going to go to options and go to video settings. So here are the settings we're using, render distance of 18, shadow distance of 12, and simulation distance of eight. V-Sync is turned off and we have our max frame rate set to unlimited. We've got the quality and performance settings set to default. And then also we have shader packs, which we're not going to turn on. I'm just going to show you what it looks like without shaders. And we're running here at 400 or so FPS. So this is the M2 max chip which is definitely take advantage of the high powered CPU and GPU. So now I'm going to go to options and go to video settings and go to shader packs. And here we're going to enable Silver's Vibrant Shaders 1.50 high. I'll just double click, now press done. And now the game looks a lot better. We're still running at quite a high frame rate, 115 FPS or so. One thing you should be aware of is the fact that we're running this game at a 1440p resolution. This means that we're running at a lower than default resolution. For example, if you're using a MacBook Pro 16 inch, then by default, Minecraft will be using the Retina resolution of 3456 by 2160. That's because Minecraft will basically accept whatever the resolution of your desktop is. And often you want to set this much lower in order to get acceptable game frame rates, especially when you're using shaders on Minecraft. So what I want to do now is to show you a tutorial about how to set a custom resolution on macOS so that you can set a decent frame rate on Minecraft. So we're going to go to this website, which I'm going to leave a link to in the description. And this is a free piece of software. So all you need to do is to go to the download section here, and then we click on this big screen icon here to download the software. So once we've downloaded it, we're going to go into Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder and then we'll double click on Switch Res X Installer. Here it's asking us to confirm whether we want to open it, press Open. And now it's opened a new preference pane on the bottom of your settings menu. So if you don't see this at first, what you do is you go to the Apple logo on the top left, go to System Settings. And on macOS Ventura, the new location for this is going to be in the bottom of the left sidebar. So here we can click Switch Res X and then you can tap on this icon here in order to open up the main menu. 
So this is the main menu for Switch Res X and today I'm going to show you how to set a custom resolution. So if we go down to the bottom of the screen here and click on built-in display, this is my 16 by 10 aspect ratio MacBook Air display. And you can see some of the display information here. So what I'm going to do is to click on this current resolutions tab and if you scroll down you'll see various resolutions. However you can see that they're all either 16 by 10 or 4 by 3. So if we want to add a 16 by 9 aspect ratio then what we need to do is go to custom resolutions. In order to add a custom resolution we first have to install the helper tool. So if you haven't done this already, all you have to do is click on about switch res X. And then what we need to do is to click this button here, which says install helper tool. Then we're going to type in our admin password. And now the helper tool has been installed. Then we'll go back to built in retina display and go back to custom resolutions. And now this plus button here is not grayed out anymore. I'm going to press plus here. And now what I'm going to do is to type in a custom resolution. So I like recording my videos in 1920 by 1080. So this is the horizontal resolution. And this here is the vertical resolution. So here I'm going to press OK. And here we have the new custom resolution with the aspect ratio here. Here it's saying that the status is not saved. In order to save the resolution, what we need to do is basically close the Switch OS X window. And it's basically going to prompt you and say, do you want to save this setting before quitting? I'm going to press save here. And for that custom resolution to kick in, what we need to do is to restart the computer. So I'm just going to click on the Apple logo here and then click restart. So once we restart the computer, we're going to go back to system settings. And then we're going to scroll down and click on Switch Res X again. And when we've got the menu open, we're going to go back into built-in retina display and then back to custom resolutions. So you're going to see here that the custom resolution is now active. So that means that if we go to current resolutions, it's going to be one that we can now select. So what we're going to do is to find the one that we've created, which is this one here. And once I click this button, then the whole screen is going to flip from 16 by 10 to 16 by 9, which I'll show you now. So now running at a 1080p resolution, which is in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And this is a far lower resolution than what the retina display defaults to. And this is going to allow games like Minecraft to accept a lower desktop resolution and therefore get much better frame rates in games. You can set it to 1080p, you can go to 1440p, and you can always select 16 by 10 aspect ratios as well. As long as they're lower resolution than the retina display, then you're going to get much better frame rates. So in this video, I've shown you how to install the latest version of Minecraft with the native version of Java. However, there are many mods and mod packs which require older versions of Minecraft and also old versions of Java as well, which are not ARM64. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to use Prism Launcher in order to set up these older instances of Minecraft and Java so you can get this working on your Apple Silicon Mac. So the example we're going to be using today is Pixelmon. This requires us to install Minecraft 1.16.5 and also make use of Java 8. So this is what I show you how to install right now. So what we need to do is to go to the Adoptium archive. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. And what we want to do is to find version 8. So I'm going to click on this drop down and select version 8. So here we don't have an ARCH64 macOS version. So what we're going to do is to select the macOS X64 version, the Intel build, and then click on the JDK. And then this is going to go ahead and download. And then what we're going to do is to install this. And then in Finder in our downloads folder, we're going to double click. And then we're going to install this particular version of Java. Press agree and then continue and install. And then you type in your password and then click install software. Now that that's installed, we're going to press close, bin, and within the prison launcher here, we're going to add an instance, and then we're going to go ahead and select 1.16.5. Then we're going to select Forge, and then download a version of Forge. I'm going to download 36.2.34 and press OK. Now that that's set up, we're going to go and press edit, and then we're going to go to mods, then I'm going to click download mods, and then within the search bar, I want to type in Pixelmon and select this one here. And this is version 9.1.2. Click select mod for download, review and confirm, then press OK. And this is going to go ahead and download this version of Pixelmon. So now what we need to do is change the Java version. So what we're, so what we're going to do is to go to settings and then go to Java installation. And then what we're going to do is to auto detect here. So here we're going to press the refresh button and then make sure that we select. And then make sure we select one of these versions of Java and then press OK. So warning Java version 8. And we'll make sure we double click and then launch the game. So it's going to minimize this and just show you that this is now loading up. So you now see we have Pixelmon installed. I'm going to go to single player and then create a new world. And we now have the Pokemon version of Minecraft running up. So here we can go ahead and pick a Pokemon. We'll go for Piplup and begin our adventure. So you can see here now we're running Pixelmon on the M2 Pro and it seems to be running pretty well. And this is a heavily modified version of Minecraft. So now I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other videos like this on my YouTube channel. So please check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.